Now let's get started with LNG trade. And in the previous lecture, we were talking about mostly on um, importers and exporters. But right now, what we're going to do is try to verify where does certain type of fuels begin with and end up with. So first things first, let's get to the data. In 2022, the international trade of natural gas as LNG represented 56% of all the gas traded. So technically speaking, uh, we have 50-50 uh, distribution, 50% via pipelines, 50% via LNG. Now this has been changing from previous years, so LNG is getting more relevant nowadays. A total of 542 BCM uh, has been uh, traded. It was an increase of 5%. Remember that when we were talking about crude oils, it was something between 1% to 2%. Well, for LNG, it was 5% the change and mostly driven because of the russian Ukrainian war and COVID inflation effects, but quite relevant to analyze. The Middle East was the largest exporter of LNG. We already know that, as well as USA, together with Australia and, of course, yeah, the US. They represent 65% of the total LNG. Now, almost two thirds of the liquefied natural gas comes from three regions. And we already know this. Actually, this is the data that we were showing. At almost 100 BCM, Japan was the largest importer of LNG. So that's very important to consider. Why is Japan using LNG and no longer pipeline? Yes, we're talking about China. China is a very important geopolitical player. Maybe they don't feel quite safe or they don't want to bet towards a relationship with China. Now, interestingly, China has been accounting for 35% of the global imports. That's definitely a big chunk compared to other countries. And as a region, the Asia Pacific or APAC imported around 65% of the total LNG, followed by Europe, which is something around 30%. Now, let's see the actual players right here. And what I want to see is exports. Remember, exports, the ones producing and selling. Uh, we're talking about Middle East, Australia, US, and Russia. We also have Africa, other APAC, and so on. But right now, let's focus on our attention only in Middle East, Australia, US, and Russia. Now, most of the Middle East goes to China. You can see the biggest stream right here. Also to other APAC. So we have that here as well. And to South Korea. So these are the main, let's say, clients for Middle East gas. Now, Australia, way interesting to see. Most of Australian natural gas goes to Japan, to China, to other APAC and South Korea. And it really makes a lot of sense. Australia could be exporting maybe to to South America, but most likely South Americans will rather go for natural gas from North America. And Russian Federation, we are seeing slight bits of Japan, slight bits of China, APAC, Korea. So technically speaking, Russia is so technically speaking, Russia is betting towards a very diversified portfolio of exportation. Now, this is essentially the same, but in numerical data. So yeah, if you were to follow all along these little streams, you can do so. And actually, I will encourage you. But let's go for the obvious one. And this country, we haven't been analyzing that much. So Australia. So these are the exports. Let's go for Australia. Where Okay, so here is Australia. Let's analyze Australia first. So this is the column. And apparently, yes, as stated before, it doesn't make that much of a sense that Australia exports gas to North America. So yeah, we can have C here zero. It also doesn't make that much of a sense to export to South and Central America. It also doesn't make that much of a sense to export to Europe. And also doesn't make that much of a sense to export to Middle East. But you don't need to because, as you can see, the biggest chunk of the business of Australia is within Asia Pacific. Bigger exporters will be China. So China is obtaining most of their natural gas from Australia. We got Japan and we also have right here Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan and so on. So we also stated that the Middle East is something relevant to analyze. Let's go for Middle East. Should be something around here. Yeah, all this is Middle East. And the biggest importers will be definitely China, India, will be also UK, Belgium, 
We're talking about also Taiwan and South Korea. And finally, yes, the US. Let's see who is the US selling most LNG to. You will see that France, you will see Spain, you will see UK, other European Union pressure here is Germany. And another interesting country will be Japan, South Korea. Okay, so now we have a better understanding of where LNG comes from, who produces it, and the geopolitical relationships. So as you can see, Australia is totally invested in the Asia-Pacific countries, which is great. They are, uh, of course, the nearest country they have there. Also, we could be thinking on China. We know that China is now uh, having extra military presence in the Yellow Sea, which is the ocean or sea between Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia. So maybe some geopolitical changes are going to happen. Although, as stated before, crude oil and coal still remain one of the most important fuels for China. So natural gas, yes, relevant for the whole world. And China is trying to bet towards that as well. Thank you.